Hello everyone, this is Deb McBride and welcome to my astrology podcast. I am broadcasting from lovely Escazú, Costa Rica on Monday, August 12th, 2019. And I'm a little delayed because I normally do this on Sunday evening, but I wrote a blog instead. (laughs) And it is all about the Jupiter and Uranus stations that we had occur yesterday. So if you want to take a look at my blog, it's debmcbride.com. And that's where you just go to the blog page. And that's where the new recent uh, episode is (laughs) installment. Um, But yes, yesterday we had a Jupiter station direct. Yay. After months, about four months or so, because it went retrograde in April. And it was uh, 9.38 a.m. Eastern Time. And so let's take that one first. Jupiter going direct usually indicates a certain amount of moving forward with maybe projects that have been put on the shelf or uh, some sort of maybe you want to sell your house and it was delayed and it was better for you to wait on selling your house or your property or something, your car, because you waited until you could get a better price. It's better actually to wait till Jupiter is direct to do something like that, sell a material object. And really what's happening is that we're moving forward in with Jupiter and Sag. So it's in its own sign and we've got the rest of the year until December or so when it goes into Capricorn. And as I've been saying for a long time now, we have to take advantage of this. So Jupiter's now direct. So push forward on your projects, on your sale of your house, on your sale of your car, on your philosophical studies because it is Jupiter and Sagittarius. And there should be some really good revelations now, like how maybe your philosophical studies in the last four months have been serving you. Maybe uh, you recognize something very important in what you've been uh, philosophically doing for yourself. Um, Revelations, opening your mind, opening the door, opportunities. This is all going with Jupiter going direct. Now, I have to admit that, you know, Jupiter does also represent things like confidence and finances and even though finances are really like a Taurus uh, entity (laughs) and that's ruled by Venus um, but Jupiter does it's the abundance it's the cash it's the it's the you know opening of financial channels and especially when it's in its own sign it's it's fortune but what we're dealing with is, you know, the the last few weeks, it's been kind of what I believe stymied or the plugged or stuck or really something where we are getting, we were getting a, a sort of a stoppage in the respect of finance or um, confidence because say you are working on a project or say you are trying to sell your house. If Jupiter is stopping, then, and it's just slowing down and it's not moving, which it's been doing for a few weeks because it's been at 14 degrees since the last week of July, and it's still at 14 degrees and is going to be at 14 degrees for the rest of the month, except for the last couple days of August where it moves to 15. So what happens is you start to clam up. And even though Mars we associate with confidence, Jupiter really is that burst of ego of, I can do this, I can do this, and and sort of devil may care. Meaning that when Jupiter's in Sag, we take risks and we jump forward and we have a leap of faith in whatever area of our life that it's affecting. And we take that leap of faith only because we're confident enough to take a leap of faith. If you're not confident to take a leap of faith, you're not going to do it. And sometimes it involves taking a leap of faith to be able to uh, be confident. So I'm glad I took that leap of faith because it really made me confident in me 
that that kind of vibe. And so what Jupiter's been doing in these last few weeks is slowing down to a crawl where we don't feel like we want to take a leap of faith because, you know, when something stops in the sky, its energy is really kind of looming. And while it was still retrograde, it didn't feel entirely safe to take a leap of faith. And that can be stopping projects, stopping our confidence, not feeling secure. It's not in a secure sign. It's not like it's in an earth sign or something, but it really does give us pause to take that leap of faith before taking that leap of faith. And so what do we do? We just sort of keep moving and trying to take our things one step at a time. And Jupiter is trying to help us along and push us through and kind of that's where we are we kind of have to push on through um the nice thing is it's in its own sign and there is a lot of fire in the sky right now supporting that so it it encourages a push on through and you know there are always obstacles there are always obstacles to our success there's always hurdles to jump over and mountains to climb but when we when we have some sort of leap of faith, we have to trust if there's a core of faith within us, if there's a core of intuition, and you may feel like you are stuck or you've been stuck in these last weeks, and you kind of have to get over that hump, which has been a little rough to do, a little hard to do. Um, however, now we can start to feel more comfortable. It's been direct for a day, and we can start to think about what it means to take that leap of faith and what happens when we take a leap of faith and what's on the other side of taking a leap of faith and trusting ourselves. You know, Jupiter and Sag is all about having trust. And if you're just going to hold back and you're just going to stay safe, then you aren't going to benefit from Jupiter and Sag. So my advice is look at your life, see where you can take a step forward that may not seem like a likely step forward and try to, um, you know, don't, don't go lateral. Don't, don't move sideways. Um, it may not seem like it's a step forward because it might be a very small step forward, but it's important to embrace it because every little detail, every little step forward is going to help. And Jupiter's still slow right now. It's going to be at 14 for a little while. When it was at 14 earlier this year, because you see it went retrograde in April, and it was not at, you know, obviously it goes backwards, and it went back 10 degrees. So that's actually quite a distance for Jupiter to go past. You know, it's been 10 degrees, and we're going to relive this 10 degrees over these next months. And the last time Jupiter was at this 14-degree place was back in January, so mid-January, when we were having eclipses, and that's, think back to mid-January and what it was feeling like. So <clears throat> it may be that you need to review these last six months, eight months, because Jupiter's like gone over a certain amount of territory, a certain amount of space in the zodiac, and then we have to kind of review it and get back to it again. Um, Jupiter is going to be, it's not going to get to that 24 degrees till the first week in November. And so we have these next months to relive the last 10 degrees that we've been through. And it will enter Capricorn on December 3rd. So really that, that early November to that early December point is all new territory for Jupiter in Sag this time around. And when you are thinking about that, you know, think about that that's only like a month of new territory that Jupiter is going to go through. So what we're really experiencing is the degrees between 14 and 24. If you have planets that relate to that in your horoscope, you will feel Jupiter more likely. And what area of your chart, what house did Jupiter do this little dance? And you want to go back and kind of review that. Where Where is it before we get into the next space of Jupiter going into 24 and beyond 24. It won't get out of its shadow until then. So 
that's not it's not like mercury where there's been like a few days and it then it gets out of its shadow or whatever a couple of weeks you know jupiter spends a good part of the year in retrograde four four months is a good it's a third of the year and so you know that's the case every year so we have to kind of look at that and and see where we've been in these months and what what it felt like and where we may have felt stymied or slowed down and uh, pick up where we left off in January and then pick up where we left off in April. So, okay, then on top of that, we had Uranus going retrograde. So this is very rare. Two planets don't usually change directions on the same day. And so Uranus is going backwards, Jupiter goes forwards, Uranus goes backwards. And Uranus is in Taurus, it's at six degrees Taurus. And this is the first time that Uranus is going to go retrograde in Taurus and stay in Taurus. Last year, this time, Uranus went retrograde in Taurus and went back into Aries. So we're not looking at Aries anymore. We're still in Taurus and we're going to stay in Taurus. And so that makes a difference too, because where Uranus is, is six degrees Taurus and <clears throat> it's not going to go direct until January. So now we have these next months, these next five months with Uranus in retrograde. And what that's asking us to do is kind of look back where this has all been new territory because Uranus has not, Uranus went to two degrees last year and then went backwards um, and left Taurus and went back into Aries. And really where we've, again, where we've been since April because Uranus was at two degrees in April and then it moved past where it was last year. So now the new territory occurred between April and now. And now Uranus is going to go back and visit all that time. So again, April is sort of a turning point. And what we want to look at is where Uranus is appearing in our chart. So wherever you have Taurus, Uranus is bringing you refreshed ideas, a uh, revolution, you know, like it's time to step it up and do something different, innovative, uh, where you want to change things in your life and maybe change them for good, change them for once and for all. And, you know, again, Taurus, which I mentioned a little while ago, is is the place where we have security and money and and stability. It's a very stable sign and it likes its stability and it likes to be knowing about the roof over the head, where the money's coming from, where the next meal is coming from. Everything has to be secure. Uranus is not like that. Uranus is like, well, it's a wild card. We don't know where anything's happening. Well, <laughs> it may be that we're so safe in that general area of our chart. Maybe it falls in your sixth house or maybe it falls in your 12th house or your third house. Jupiter is helping us move forward, you know, now. But Uranus is saying okay, where do we have to review that's been maybe gotten a little stale, you know, on the abundance front, because again, it's Taurus. Um, so where have we gotten a little stale and where do we need to go back and refresh this? Where, where were we presented with new things in these months? Something different. Now, it's an interesting thing because Taurus, again, is very stable and Uranus is sort of an erratic energy and it's, it's not something where we can say, ah, okay, you know, it's Venus in Taurus and it's staying there and it's slow and it's steady and, you know, the sun is in Taurus and it, this is Uranus. <laughs> and Uranus really likes to be in Scorpio, the opposite sign of Taurus. And Uranus does not necessarily agree to the parameters of Taurus. It's going to come into Taurus and say, okay, you know what? This job is stale. Toss it. You've got to move something. You've got to move something. And we're not sure where Uranus is going to uh, move things. If it's an area of your life where you have been doing the same thing for the last 40 years, you might want to consider freshening it up you know, clearing the clutter from that area of your chart. Like I said, it could be your sixth house. It could be your 12th house, your third house, anywhere in your chart where you have Taurus and Uranus is coming in to sort of spruce it up and get rid of the old, clear out the desk drawers, um, move the furniture around, throw out the old couch. <laughs> it's what was, what was comfortable is not going to be comfortable anymore. And what is sort of 
innovative is where we have to take again take some leaps of faith and say okay i'm not really sure where this is taking me but i gotta just follow the energy and astrology as a rule following the energy in a good way not in a negative self-destructive way is really where we have to go we have to follow the energy we have to take risks we have to take leaps we have to know when it's not time to take a leap when it's time to sort of stay secure and Uranus and Taurus is going to make everybody want to hold on to their money and hold on tight to their money and because it feels so unstable now if any billionaire will tell you holding on to their money wasn't exactly the way they got to be a billionaire and having to you know you got to make money to spend money you got to spend money to make money and you've got to be a little freer and a little more open with how you manage your money. But you also have to go back and clean up where maybe you've been handling your money a certain way. Maybe you've got the same accountant for 40 years and he says, I'm retiring. Thank you very much. And you say, oh, no, now what? <laughs> well, you have to go get a new accountant with a fresh mind. Maybe they're very Uranian. Maybe they're going to save you money. Maybe they are going to be, and you have to be very careful about it too. All right, just like not someone that's going to, all right, this is the first one I found, so I'm just going to go with it and not doing enough research. Remember, it's still Taurus. It's still stability. So Uranus is saying, well, if you, wherever you've been doing the same old thing for so many years, you gotta, you got to get more visible and you got to update it because Uranus is all about the technology and the updates and the the new world we live in and the way we communicate differently and how, how things are going to um, shift for us in those areas. I'm hearing all different things about currencies and uh, finance plans and things that are happening globally. And of course, Uranus is a collective planet that, you know, are going to shift the way we spend money, how we transfer money, how we move money around. Um, and, <coughs> Pardon me. There's always ways to expand that and do different things. Technology has really changed the way we work with money. We don't often have to hand money anymore to anyone. You go out to dinner with a friend and you can just use an app on your phone to, you know, you know, pay them for your portion of dinner that they're going to put on their credit card. So think about those things. Things about think about how that world is changing and we have to kind of go along with it and think about wherever Taurus is in your in your chart maybe you're too attached to that old sofa and you need new energy in your house so think about updating and renovating and Uranus is going to kind of go back over that section of your chart and ask you to review stuff and take what you've done in these months and renovate it over the next over the next few months and surprise yourself be be uh forward thinking in your taurus house it's hard to do that taurus is very much a creature of habit and comfort there's nothing wrong with that we got to have that somewhere in our life right where we can kind of go and feel the security of that uranus is saying think outside the box now we're going to get a real test of thinking outside the box this week because on friday the 16th mercury is going to square uranus and so you know we're we may find ourselves up against a little bit of a wall here now mercury's direct and mercury's going to pass its point of shadow this week so it'll be done with its retrograde energy and that's going to be because it passes four degrees leo which is the day before it goes to square Uranus. So now it's squaring Uranus on Friday and we're being asked to think outside the box. And if you are presented with information that's new and foreign, it's good for you to work with that energy and say, okay, it's like, because well, look, this is all fixed. You know, Mercury is in Leo and Uranus is in Taurus and we don't want to budge, but you've got to open the door a crack to get some new ideas in because if we don't do that we're going to stay stale in that Taurus house so maybe someone's going to come and say well why don't you do it this way and you go well I never thought of it that way you have to be open to that as opposed to mm -mm, not going to work not going to work sorry <laughs> and you have to discern and delineate the difference between something 
where you're <laughs> being stubborn or it really isn't to your benefit to change the way you're doing something. So that's Mercury squaring Uranus. So think about that. It's going to be very interesting. The other happy news is that on Wednesday, the Sun and Venus meet in an exact conjunction, finally. So they've been sort of dancing around each other for a few weeks. You know, when we had the eclipse, it was close. Venus was close to the Sun in, in, in the second eclipse. But they have never been exact. And then we had that nice new moon on the 31st of July, and that brought Venus close to the sun again, but never exact until this Wednesday, the 14th, when they meet in Leo. And the moon will be in Aquarius, the opposite sign. So there's all this opposition between Venus and the moon. So the goddesses are going to be sort of battling it out a little bit. But the sun, Venus, is uh, a really lovely aspect. And you should embrace it and use it to your advantage. And it's in Leo. It's a lovely, lovely aspect of, um, you know, camaraderie and generosity and family and, and friends and uh, good times and stuff. So the sun Venus is very positive. And, you know, um, Venus does these eight-year cycles around the earth. And this is the beginning of one of the, her eight-year cycles. So we, whenever there's a Sun-Venus conjunction, it makes a, a point, you know, Venus makes that beautiful fla sacred geometry-shaped flower when she is in her eight-year cycle. And one new point on the, the five-pointed star when Venus goes around the zodiac, um, it, it happens at the point um, of Venus to the, Sun-Venus conjunction and we call this a Venus star point so on that it begins on that point of 21 degrees Leo it's very important very important degree if you have something at 21 degrees Leo there may be an area where you are starting something new um, creatively or financially or in friendship or love or romance but Venus and the the Sun create that five-pointed star and every time Venus and the Sun meet um, you will, it will make a point on that star. And the interesting thing is um, that Venus is now going to become an evening star again. So we can look up at the sky and see Venus in, in the night because this is when she shifts her place in the sky from morning or evening. And now she's going to evening. So you can look and look at night and see Venus and she's very bright. Um, Ariel Gutman, who is an astrologer, uh, wrote a book about the Venus star point. So if you're interested in that, I suggest you look it up. In the meantime, um, we have a full moon on Thursday, which is at 22 Aquarius, which means the sun and Venus will be sort of earlier at 22 Leo and they will be opposite this full moon. And so it's going to be an interesting time. Um, the full moon will occur at 829 a.m., on Thursday Eastern time and then it you know the moon opposes Venus at 9 16 a.m. and then opposes Mars at 9 o 2 p.m. all Eastern time now this is really interesting because the Sun is sort of nestled between Venus and Mars right now if we're looking at it and it's all of them these are the relationship planets folks and we're having a full moon in the opposite place of the relationship planets and the Sun and the moon and are opposite, but Venus and Mars are all on the side of the sun. So it may be something really lovely or exciting or initiating in your life. And that's where we need to sort of pay attention. Um, you know, the, the moon in Aquarius is much more cerebral. And so, but all of that sun, Venus, Mars in Leo is very heart centered. And it's important for us to sort of, um, embrace that and that's where the bulk of the energy really is it's not really you know they're they're and they're ending their journey in leo because they're all coming to the end of leo and later in the month they're going to go to virgo um so enjoy this enjoy this this isn't a real uh this isn't a real like they're going to slow down and they're going to go into Virgo and this isn't a real long time that we're going to get to experience them in all this fire and passion so those are those are good things um and then pretty soon after that so then we get 
on Sunday the 18th, which is next Sunday, we get Mars going into Virgo. So the, that's going to be the first one that goes into Virgo. The Sun and Mars are not really going to conjunct in Leo because Mars has been so much further ahead of it. But they're going to come pretty close at this point. So really, it you know, we're going to be on work mode because all next week, first Mars, this is between the 18th and the 24th, and we'll talk more about this next week. The 18th, the 21st, the 23rd, everything, all one at a time, the planets are going to go into Virgo. So we're not there yet. Stay focused on Leo right now and just be creative and generous and enjoy your time. Remember what I said a couple weeks ago, enjoy this time. Reach out and be friendly and be social and because there's plenty of time to work when everything goes into Virgo and you're going to really feel like we're on work mode. Use this as creativity time. So, And the moon right now is in Capricorn and it's doing that occultation thing all day today, the 12th. It's going to be, it's already occulted Saturn that with the conjunction. It's going to occult Pluto and go retrograde. At, I'm sorry, go retrograde, go void. The moon does not go retrograde. It goes void. It might as well be in retrograde, but uh, go void at 6.11 p.m. Eastern time. So mm, the moon is going to be void from the evening, and then it goes into Aquarius tomorrow morning, 11.35 a.m. Eastern time. And, you know, this is an interesting thing with these occultations. It's, it's you know, again, we're, we're being hidden from the transformation. Just keep moving. Don't indulge it. Just keep going. Um, I'm not so concerned about the moon being in Capricorn right now. We're past the eclipses. We're moving into a full moon later this week. It's all in Aquarius and Leo. That's where things are happening. So allow that, allow the Leo energy to take you someplace on a nice, friendly journey. Um, and just keep moving today. Just kind of... It's hard to push forward through a transformation when the energy of transformation is blocked, if the light of the transformation is blocked. But we have to do this every month when the moon goes into Capricorn. And so it's important to pay attention to that. And we just have to like keep our head down and keep working. It's what the moon in Capricorn requires. And the moon is in Aquarius for a good portion of the week. Then it goes into Pisces on Thursday, late at night, Eastern time, 1149 p.m. It's in Pisces most of the weekend and Sunday afternoon it goes into Aries. So I like this. I like this portion of the Zodiac um, because, you know, we're getting past all that Capricorn business and we're, and it really is business, and we are going through the uh, places where we have to, you know, embrace our faith embrace our talents, embrace our uh, belief in things otherworldly. And so those are important things to, to remember. Enjoy this Leo week. This is the last week of Mars in Leo. It's Mars in a fire sign. It's happy there. And it's been, you know, relatively friendly to Jupiter and the sun and Venus. And so let's see, let's nurture our relationships this week. Let's have fun with our friends. Let's enjoy what we're doing. I thank you for listening. My name is Deb McBride and I am available for astrological consultations and you can reach me Deb at debmcbride.com and when uh, you are looking on Twitter I'm at Deb Astrology or at the same on Instagram at Deb Astrology. I just wrote a new blog. Have a look at that. Um, at my website, debmcbride.com, and also look at my YouTube page where I've been uh, putting up videos. So I welcome you to all of those channels. Thank you for listening. Have a great Mars and Leo week.